from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 27th, 2024. An IDF soldier was killed in the early morning hours today by a roadside bomb in the West Bank. IDF troops were in Jenin overnight last night to arrest Hamas terrorists during a counter-terror operation when it appears that an IDF armored personnel carrier used by a medical force was hit by a bomb planted underneath the road. And as other forces ran to help those inside, a second bomb exploded, killing 22-year-old Captain Alon Sakju, also wounding 16 others. The IDF continues its ground operation in Gaza against terror group Hamas, eliminating terrorists and destroying terror infrastructure, including, it said last night, terrorists who were in a school compound in the Khan Yunis area. The IDF said the school served as the headquarters of the terrorist organization Hamas, from where Hamas terrorists planned, directed, and carried out many terrorist plots against our forces operating in the Gaza Strip. The IDF also sharing that aid continues to flow into Gaza and that overnight a humanitarian aid convoy, 22 aid trucks and six fuel tankers entered Gaza via Gate 96, an additional route to bringing aid in addition to the Karim Shalom crossing, the Erez crossings, airdrops and the J Lots, the maritime route. The IDF saying we will continue expanding our efforts to facilitate humanitarian aid into and across Gaza. The IDF also continues to hit Hezbollah terror targets in Lebanon as Hezbollah continues to fire rockets and drones at northern Israel. Earlier today, the IDF said an Air Force aircraft eliminated an active member of terror group Hezbollah's UAV launch unit that has been firing drones at northern Israel. The IDF also noting that some of the rockets launched by Hezbollah at Israel misfire and end up landing within Lebanon. The IDF said today that one in six Hezbollah launches hit Lebanese civilian areas. Hezbollah endangered Lebanese civilians while attempting to attack Israelis. The IDF said the world must wake up and see Hezbollah for what it is, a danger to all. Israel's Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, wrapped up his visit to Washington yesterday, saying of the meetings with senior officials, including his U.S. counterpart Lloyd Austin, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, and U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, that at the end of these important meetings, we were able to achieve significant progress and remove the obstacles to the continued supply of weapons to Israel. This is an important message to the entire world, Galan said, to our friends and enemies who see the strength of the partnership between Israel and the USA. The USA and Israel stand as one against our common enemy in the world. We will do whatever it takes to stamp out terrorism and return the kidnapped to their homes. Well, the man who allegedly asked, quote unquote, Zionists to raise their hands on the subway and get out has been arrested. The New York Police Department released a photo of the suspect last week, which we shared with you. And the JTA via the Jewish Week reported that the NYPD told them a 24 year old resident of Staten Island, New York, was arrested after he reportedly turned himself in. He was charged with attempted coercion in the third degree. The Anti-Defamation League released a new survey today conducted across seven countries with large Jewish communities looking at anti-Semitic and anti-Israel attitudes across the J7 task force countries, which are the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Argentina, and Australia. The survey revealing that nearly 40 percent of respondents agreed with at least six anti-Semitic tropes. 56% of all respondents agreed with the dual loyalty trope, the notion that Jews are more loyal to Israel than to their home country, and a belief in the trope that Jews are responsible for most of the world's wars increased as well, up to 23% in Argentina, 
up 19 percent in the U.S., 17 percent in France and Germany. CEO Jonathan Greenblatt said after years of anti-Semitism, mostly keeping to the fringes of society, it is alarming to see the percentage of people who harbor anti-Semitism and anti-Israel beliefs rising both in the United States and around the world. He said this troubling trend demands our immediate attention and unified action. We will continue to work closely with our partners in the J7 Large Communities Task Force Against Anti-Semitism to record incidents and trends, combat extremism, and ensure the safety and security of Jewish communities globally. The ADL also noted the survey found that support of terror group Hamas is being slowly normalized, saying on average over 15 percent of respondents view Hamas very or somewhat favorably. That percentage increases to 26 percent amongst Generation Z. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, June the 27th at 8 o'clock from the 2024 American Jewish Committee Global Forum, student groups are honored with the AJC Sharon Green Award for campus advocacy and discussions on safeguarding Jewish campus life featuring the presidents of Brandeis and the University of Michigan. At 9, it's Kenneth Brander on L'Chaim. At 10.30, an encore of the news. And coming up next, Hartman Scholar-in-Residence Masua Sagiv and Hartman Senior Fellow James Loeffler discuss college and the public discourse of Israel in North America at the Shalom Hartman Institute's Community Leadership Program in Jerusalem. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 27th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. I'm Yisrael Chai.